These are necessary conversations. Ideas come from everywhere. And the next generation takes them into a new idea. About us, by us, for us, and near us. Desire to do class ballet. And I used to dance and I at the Palace Theater in Seattle. I wanted ballet. I wanted ballet like nobody. When I came into the project, I didn't know about Sevilla at all. She was from Seattle, and she was very interested in meeting me, and I had just started a dance studio here. She taught from the age of like 13. She was holding little classes in, in people's living rooms, in, in the CD, and I, and I gather elsewhere. Much of the, the history and the legacy is in the bodies of the people who experienced it and the bodies of the folks that are carrying it forward. Um, like prime example is learning about Sevilla through Miss Edna. Um, you know, there, there are biographies about her written online. Um, there's some information, but it was just really hard to piece together what her life might have looked like here in Seattle mm -hmm. before she moved. desire to, to, to do classical ballet and my mother carefully took me around several studios, more than several studios. I was denied entrance because of color. Still I wanted to dance, I just wanted to dance. So my mother saw that I got private lessons until a class could be formed for me or to help me. And back and forth from year to year I began to get training bit by bit through, you know, various circumstances. Sevilla's mom worked as a housekeeper and a cook for Nellie Cornish. And at Nellie Cornish's place, you know, Cornish at that time, Sevilla was able to get training and dance lessons and private lessons. And so eventually, Nellie Cornish welcomed Sevilla into that community. That program was sort of three-year program, and at the end of the three years, you would present work as a sort of culmination of your studies. And so she put on a final concert that happened in April 28, 1940, and it was her own choreography, an evening of her own rep and she collaborated with a bunch of different artists to do it, but um, these were her ideas. This was the culmination of her studies. And then eventually uh, she ended up wanting very much to incorporate Caribbean and African movement into her dance repertoire, which she did. I and mean, she was very committed to that. The Space Needle is one of the most recognized uh, towers in the world. Cornish was this place where artists, dancers, actors came together and there was a synergy in that group who were uh, feeding off each other and learning from each other and it became a really wonderful community. So Sevilla was part of that, Victor Steinberg was part of that. We know that this, the curve and the needle uh, was inspired by the sculpture of the feminine one. Certainly Victor Steinberg saw these figures, you know, the, the figure, the shape of the feminine one as a dancer, I started thinking, who were the dancers that were around Seattle around those times when he was kind of coming of age? And that's when I discovered Sevilla Fort. If we look at the Space Needle as this icon of a region, what would it mean to imagine her as perhaps capturing the spirit of a Sevilla Fort? When I went to New York in 1970, I think it was about 70, 70, about 76, 
and I was able to be introduced to her and uh, sit in on her class and watch. She was a very good teacher. She was very uh, into giving her students a voice so that she could understand their needs. Because everyone who, who would come to her studio was not pursuing dance careers. They were just wanting to be a, a community, to be able to talk and express themselves. And she adopted so many of these students, uh, Eartha Kitt, mm -hmm. Marlon Brando, uh, it was uh, Cheetah Rivera. Mm -hmm. Every step and every move that she would teach her students had some kind of purpose and reference. It made you move, it made you feel what, what, what she was trying to tell you through the story, because she is a storyteller. In researching Sevilla and her contributions and her early sort of dance education, I can already see where the connections are. I know that she was a part of that early generation of Dunham dancers. And I know that I studied Dunham as a, as a child, and so I'm deeply connected to those movements. I know that she moved to New York and studied, but then taught a whole generation of mm -hmm. New York dance mm -hmm. artists who went mm -hmm. on to teach, perform, choreograph, be in movies, be on Broadway, you know, be in theater productions, do modern choreography. And that sort of cascades into the, the companies and, and ensembles and choreography that they created. And it sort of all continues in this circle. And, and in a lot of ways, that sort of dance is a continuum of movement. There are just these ideas that come back over again and the next generation takes them and takes them into a new idea. I think that, I mean, dance is really beautiful. There's a lot of embodied knowledge that, that artists carry in movement, in their body, over time, across generations. So there are certainly, there are certainly things that are present because they were explored by someone like Sevilla Fort in the 1930s and 40s, or someone like Catherine Dunham in the 1930s and 40s. And they still show up in the roots of the movement mm -hmm, that we mm -hmm. do today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really beautiful thing about dance as an archive. Um, dancers, choreography, we, we can hold memory in these ways that are very much like unspoken. BECU isn't like other financial institutions, and the difference is people. Because we're not for profit, there's no boardroom of billionaires maximizing their margins. Our biggest stakeholders are people like you. It's our members who make money meaningful, so we focus on helping them thrive. It's the art student bringing beauty to his community that makes a college loan matter. It's the mother building her family's foundation that makes a mortgage matter. It's people that make BECU matter. People like you. Meta's mission is to build technologies that help people connect, find communities, and grow businesses. Supporting local artists allows us to shape the way we think about building the next evolution of digital connection. We are proud to support Black Arts Legacies.